Back to the lead. More breaking news in our politics lead today. A top House Republican today suggesting that now fired National Security Advisor Michael Flynn might have broken the law. House Oversight Committee Chairman Jason Chaffetz of Utah said he has seen no evidence that Flynn complied with disclosure laws regarding the money he took for engagements and appearances in Russia and lobbying for a Turkish company. Chaffetz and his committee wrote to the White House for more information on this, but got an executive Heisman in response. Asked for information about Flynn's contacts with foreign nationals during the transition. The White House acted as if the transition was some grainy, hazy memory like Woodstock and not the period in which Flynn was the incoming national security advisor in a process run by the vice president. All the information that they're talking about occurred prior to him being at the White House. To ask the White House to produce documents that were not in the possession of the White House is, is, un, is ridiculous. Okay, that's during the transition. What about after the transition, when Flynn was in the White House? Well, for that information, the White House said releasing any such documentation might compromise national security. That's the same reason they gave for not publishing the White House visitors' logs, incidentally. It's a catch-all that all administrations use when they don't want to release embarrassing information. So then the big question, of course, did Flynn break the law when filling out his questionnaire for his national security position and not including the $45,000 in payments from the Russian government? The White House would not say. That would be a question for him and, and, and a law enforcement agency, whether or not he filled. I don't know what he filled out and what he did or did not do. Um, you might want to look into that. Let's bring in my panel. We have with us uh, Dan Pfeiffer, Amy Walter, and David Urban. Uh, David Urban, let me start with you, uh, the man who won Pennsylvania <laughs> for uh, President Trump. You're not a member of the White House. You don't have to defend anything you don't want to def defend. But a few weeks ago, people were wondering why Michael Flynn wanted immunity. This might be why Michael Flynn wanted immunity. Oh, I think it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good chance there, Jay. <laughs> uh, I would say that uh, uh, Jacob Ch uh, Chairman Chaffetz is not necessarily one who is uh, going to uh, take take that position that he did today, saying that he saw nothing, kind of taking a swing at, uh, at General Flynn there. I'll say, but I, I still would say, let, let's reserve judgment. Let's wait and see General Flynn. I, I work with him. He's a a distinguished career in the military, a three-star general, lieutenant general, headed of the Defense Intelligence Agency. He's a bright man. And let's just see what's in the paper. Let's let it play out. Let's let the string be pulled. And I, I say let's, let's withhold judgment until all the facts are in. That's fair enough. But, Dan Pfeiffer, let me ask you. Um, you saw Sean Spicer's, the way that they're trying to deal with this, which is kind of the same way they tried to deal with Paul Manafort, which is kind of pretending like they never even met this person or he had this very small role. Manafort played a huge role. Flynn played a huge role. Um, how would you advise them if you were a communications director at the White House right now? What would you say is the way to handle it? I think what would be, but look, there are no good answers for Sean right now. That's kind of true every day, but it's particularly true in this case. Those are particularly not good answers. They are going to have to give this documentation over. If Flynn did something wrong, they, they've already fired him. For, as a, from a political perspective, they should cut bait. That is the right thing to do. If he lied to them and lied on his forms, then they should not be up there defending him and they should not be taking political water on on his behalf. There are, it is sort of shocking they allowed this to happen because we all knew about, Trump, about Flynn's connections to RT and the Russians and to not ask those questions and look at those forms before he submitted them is either, is, it's a fairly shocking you know, level of incompetence there. Do you, what, do you think that there is political water that he's taking on or is this just something that that the you president's know, taking on, you mean? Or yeah, do, I mean, is this actually <clears throat> affecting the White House, or is this something that like the media follows and yeah. people who hate Trump follow? But generally speaking, this has no effect, or does it have an effect? I mean, Chaffetz, yeah. as David pointed out, Chaffetz doesn't normally say things like this. No, although Chaffetz is leaving mm -hmm. his position and going back to Utah, potentially mm -hmm. running for governor, so it doesn't hurt to look like you're doing a bipartisan work on uh, ethics reform while you're trying to run for a, a bigger, higher executive office. Um, at the same time, I would say, I agree with your first point, Jake, that I think that for most Americans are not sitting around going, I wonder whatever happened to that Michael Flynn. He's not part of the White House team right now. Um, it's not a good story when you're still talking about the, the fact that somebody that you brought on either lied to you or to the other more damning point that you were not as an organization competent enough to find this out before you brought him on. But I think most people are much more concerned with what is the current national security advisor doing right. than what the former national security advisor who was there for 15 minutes. And let's talk about uh, national security. Let's talk about the sanctuary city uh, ruling that the judge handed down from the Eighth Circuit. Um, uh, Ninth nine, nine Circuit. Ninth Circuit, I'm it sorry. It makes a difference. I'm sorry. You're, you're right, indeed it does. Um, and so uh, what, do you, what do you make of all this? Look, I, I think uh, as you, you spoke with uh, you know, uh, uh, earlier in the, in the segment. Yeah, we, we spoke with Sarah and also with uh, with Cory Booker about you know the, uh, the what happened in, in, in Newark, right? There, 
not not much uh, not two but two years ago something very similar happened in San Francisco a horrific incident with a with a criminal alien I, I don't see why these are these are mutually exclusive goals in terms of protecting folks from criminal aliens and and having the cooperation that Becerra and others spoke about I don't think they're mutually exclusive I think the laws in place you should, the city should follow the law Dan well I think what in, you live in San Francisco I do live in San Francisco yeah uh, as as both Becerra and Senator Booker pointed out there's image between the policy in the actual implementation of the policy. I think what Senator Booker was referring to in Newark, the policy was not handled correctly either at the federal level or the local level, and that's the difference. But there is there is a reason this is not work. There's a long history of people, members of the community who are undocumented, who've been there for years, not turning to law enforcement, victims of domestic abuse being afraid to report abusers because they're afraid they will get deported. And if there if that fear of deportation is there, then it, the law enforcement will not work within the community, so they're doing what's best for the community. All right, panel, stick around. We've got lots more to talk about, including Barack Obama and Ivanka Trump getting booed during her debut on the world political stage as her father's advisor. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 